Uh, let's talk a little bit about scheduling. I'm going to start by looking at the production calendar because I often find this is the easiest place to get people kind of focused around what we're doing from a scheduling perspective. Know that behind the scenes there is a tool that is an MRP tool for those folks that have had spent uh, time with other systems. Uh, material requirements planning allows you, the system goes and looks at supply and demand and tells you when you're going to be short of something. So that MRP basically is creating what's called planned orders. You don't know it right now, but a lot of the stuff you're looking at right now is the result of that. They're planned orders where the system is suggesting that I make something. I can override that and say, oh, wait a second, this is what I'm going to make and when I'm going to make it. I'll talk about that as well. But this is the visual part of the schedule. This is how most people think about the brewery, about what we're going to brew, what we're going to ferment, and when we're going to do all those things. Now, visually, what we're trying to do is make it easy for the user to see what's going on, <clears throat> but also be able to filter out to, so they can get to data quickly. This, to me, is a hot mess right now. Um, it's uh, got my brewing, it's got my fermentation, it's got my packaging all being shown at the same time. Uh, I'm not sure that I can make a lot out of this, quite frank. Uh, but I'm showing you this because I just want to show that the system is configurable. I have set up in my demo database a process of brewing, a process of fermentation, a process of packaging. Uh, those are three different stages, if you will, of manufacture that I've chosen to break out in my system. Uh, it's all data driven, so there's no programming associated with any of this. I basically said, here are my formulas for brewing, here are my formulas for fermenting, here are my, here are my processes for packaging, and the system created all, all this stuff and, get, and allows me to pick colors, etc. The reason this is important is it allows me to drill into certain parts of the process. I was looking, okay, here we go. Um, it allows me to drill into a process, in this case, the brew house. So this is the schedule for the brew house. Know that I could manage multiple brew houses as well. Uh, we call those facilities. So you can have multiple facilities listed out there. I basically got everything sitting in a facility called Georgia. Um, Sierra Nevada, for example, uses this, and one facility for them is Chico, and another facility is in Asheville. So um, you know we can handle the multi-facility scenario for a brewery. Um, now, we've got all the kind of traditional calendar functionality where I can drag and drop and just kind of move the calendar around to kind of micromanage and get it exactly where I want it to be. So I just move some things around mostly to demonstrate that I can do that. Uh, but I'm also kind of looking at when I'm going to be brewing and kind of balance. I, you know, I kind of know what's going on with those kind of intuitively. I'm looking at it on a month basis. I could also look at it on a week and a day basis if I wanted to do that as well. Now, on Monday and Tuesday, this is actually P colon stands for a planned order. This is where the system was suggesting that I brew something. I'll go back through MRP in a few minutes and kind of just tell you and show you a little bit about how the system is helping me plan what I need to do. But basically, this is me brewing over a couple of days, and it's actually got, if I double click on it, I'm actually making 100 barrels. Depending on my brew house, this could be split into two, three, four, or five brews. It depends on... Um, the brew house settings that I want to set on there. So I've got a number of brews that this is going to be split into. This is an example of, of having done that. So I took a 100 barrel uh, planned order and I split it and it made two um, brew logs, batch tickets, uh, at each for 50 barrels each. And then again, I'm back to planning over here. So I can move this stuff around as much as I want, uh, kind of balance my schedule. Um, the same concept holds true. I'm going to go over to packaging and show you a little different scenario in packaging. So now I've isolated packaging. So I'm at the other end of the line, and I'm trying to decide when stuff's coming out. Now, I haven't really said this yet, but know that the brew, the fermentation, and the packaging are all tied together. So the back end of a brew is tied to the front end of a fermentation. The back end of a fermentation is tied to the front end of packaging, so that as I move one, I'm in effect moving the others. So these packagings are really related to fermentations that that, you know, we're finishing this time period, so my brew was happening toward the end of this period up above. Um, so as I move things around, it's moving the other part of the calendar as well. Um, now, the point I wanted to make here on the packaging side is that unlike brewing, packaging actually has some sub-departments in it for most breweries. In other words, you've got the canning area, you've got the bottling area, you've got kegging area, and while they're all packaging and you're interested in knowing what I'm packaging and what my packaging guys are going to be doing, 
And I also probably want to drill a level down below that and say, all right, now show me, say, just the can line as an example. If I've either got my own can line or maybe I've got a, a mobile can line coming in, uh, I can drill into that and say, okay, they need to be here in this time period because that's when I'm canning. Um, so it allows me to kind of stay within packaging but drill down further in that. I could, of course, do bottling and canning and kegging, et cetera. I can mix and match those and pick as many of those as I want to. Um, so that's the uh, the kind of one of the usage of this. Now, when I get over to fermentation, I believe that this view gets really crazy, and I'm not convinced that this is terribly helpful to anyone. Uh, but it's there. Uh, when you have more than a couple of fermenters, I don't think you can really make much sense out of this. So instead, what we did is we created a view called the resource view or resource by week view, and what this is allowing me to see is uh, my cellar. So these are all my fermentation tanks I've got listed here, and what we're planning to do in the cellar in different time periods. So I just moved to a time where I had a little more activity. So I'm able to see uh, kind of when fermentations are going to be starting and ending. I didn't say this earlier, but I've got a couple of styles of beer. There's, I've only got one style listed on the screen right now. I've got basically my IPAs, uh, but I've also got a, a stout, and I've got some others in my demo database. The point here is I can have different fermentation times per style of beer. So that's tied to the style of beer. So in this case, this IPA, I've got a, a fermentation time of 14 days. And so it understands, it can calculate the anticipated start and end days of that fermentation. And MRP is really doing all that because if it knows that I need to package on a certain date, it says, okay, the fermentation's got to be done before that, which means the fermentation's got to start by a certain date, which actually drives out my brew date. Okay. So it's all tied together based on lead times.